Hello everybody, I'm Evan Kamika. 20 years of iOS TV continues right now. Each week, join myself and an expert line panel, dissect the latest sports news from some of the nation's most elite college programs right here in Bloomington to the biggest stadiums and stages around the world. Stick around because we got a great show for you coming up on The Toss Up. Team 50, if you haven't heard of them, you probably should, and you definitely will after watching this. That's what Sean Nistan and the Indiana softball team call themselves as they have high hopes for this new softball season. Oh, and later in the show, we have a special guest that I already said her name, so be excited for that. But right now, joining the panel is our IUS TV softball trio. That's Ryan Costello, Emma Watson, and Samantha Condra. Everyone, I, I'd say welcome back, but I feel like I see you guys all the time. So yeah. Welcome yeah. back yeah. anyway. Well, thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. <laughs> and yeah, I'm bummed we don't have helmets today to put on. I know. Oh, we, we need softball asked. bats. Yeah, we need softball bats. Maybe we, we do. can do like a little sword fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like like Star Wars kind of thing, Start like lightsabers with like baseball, <laughs> and baseball yeah. bats. Exactly. Anyway, <laughs> let's just dive right into it. Indiana finished last season in a heartbreaking way, missing out in the NCAA tournament again. Ryan, I'll start with you. What does the team have to do this season to get better? They need to have consistent pitching. Um, Heather Johnson, she needs to dominate. So does Brianna Copeland and Macy Montgomery. They just need to have that consistent pitching because that's the most important thing to win some games. I'm going to follow up with that and say I was there at the Big Ten tournament and I saw the heartbreaking loss to Penn State. And one of the things that we talked about after the game with that is Indiana had a lot of chances to put that game away. Um, they had a lot of opportunities and scoring position that they weren't able to capitalize on. They had a lot of 0-2 counts. Sometimes they had a lot of runs that came off of two outs. Um, throughout the season last year with Team 49, they just could not finish games. Um, we covered one game against Notre Dame uh, where they had the Irish on the ropes the entire game and they lost it in the final minutes. And that is kind of been the story for Indiana softball the past couple of years. As soon as they can get over that hump, if they can start finishing innings and finish with runners in scoring position, this, ke this team could leapfrog up in the RPI. Um, but that's the stuff that they got to focus on um, going forward the rest of the season is just finishing games. Samantha. Yeah, I'm kind of just going to add on to that is it's finishing games, but also just kind of be way better on the infield. And they had a lot of errors last season. I mean, they had some games where they had five-plus errors, and that just can't happen, especially if you want to make the postseason, if you want to make a difference in the Big Ten tournament. And I just think I, I was at the Louisville game where they were up 5 nothing and allowed two grand slams, and it just completely changed the game. And so, like Emma said, finishing out games and just really cracking down on the defensive side of things because they did really well hitting last year, but the errors killed them. And there's a big difference between Team 49 and Team 50. You have nine new freshmen coming in. Emma, I'll start with you. I know you wanted to make a point, but we're going to keep going on. Um, <laughs> what do you think, you know, who's going to st stand out for you as a freshman? Honestly, I think they're not going to stand out right away, but I think going forward in the rest of the season, you're going to see her name pop up, hopefully. Um, and it's somebody that I think fulfills that Aaliyah Andrews type role. Last year, Team 49, Aaliyah Andrews, she didn't get a whole lot of starts, but in the last part of the season, she was really, really reliable in the outfield. And that's Cassidy Kettleman. Cassidy Kettleman was not a headliner recruit, such as like Avery Parker or Taryn Kern or Sophie Kleiman. But Cassie Kettleman is a top-notch athlete coming from Amherst. Um, she's really good in the outfield. Um, we've seen her come in uh, when she's given these pinch hitting situations. She's been able to come up clutch. Um, a couple of games ago, she had like this highlight reel catch that had everybody on their feet. She's a really, really good athlete, and she's not going to stand out right away. But I will say that should there come a time for her name to be put into the lineup, I think people will be really impressed with what they see. Samantha? Um, I'm going to go Avery Parker. I mean, this this freshman squad is so good, but Avery Parker has been playing in the, de the designated player role so far for Indiana this season and has just done a really good job. And Emma mentioned earlier that um, – 
and her first at bat in her collegiate career it was in the fall not in the spring but she hit a home run and that just is speaks wonders and this indiana team that did hit well i think she'll fit in well to that and also she wears number 18 which as we all know Brittany ford wore last year and she was just insane at the plate and someone that you really trusted and I think that'll be her her biggest thing is just being able to get the bats hot for the Hoosiers. There's something about the number 18. Ryan, <laughs> what about you? Like Emma said, I'm going to go with um, Taryn Kern because she currently leads the team in batting average. And she started the game. Uh, she started every game, all nine games. And she's just been consistent um, on both sides of the ball. She had two perfect fielding games with Alabama and Louisiana. So Taryn's just shown how good of a Hoosier she can be from the offset. And Ryan, I'll stick with you. We'll move on from freshman to MVP. Somebody's got to be the best player on this team. Who's it going to be? Well, like I said with pitching, it starts with Heather Johnson. Heather led the team in innings pitch last year and in ERA. So I know that she's going to be the person that's going to help the team um, go off and win some games because even though she hasn't um, shown that yet in these games, I think these ranked matchups are really going to help her down the line in Big Ten play. Samantha? I'm going to go Brianna Copeland. And she's just an athlete. I mean, this Indiana team, what they talk about the most is just being athletic, and that is their biggest strong suit. And Brianna Copeland, I mean, she can do really well in the circle. She hit, she had a no-hitter earlier on in the season, and she also can hit super well. She talked about how she's been working on her hitting and just being a lot more patient at the plate, and I think if she can really do that, she can be one of the best players in the Big Ten. I think it would be a shame <laughs> to not mention Cora Bassett. Mm -hmm. um, Cora Bassett is a potential candidate for Big Ten Player of the Year. I think she was really, really good last year. I think she'll carry that on. But I'm going to go with her partner in crime, Brooke Benson. Um, we talked about with Cora and Brooke at Media Day about the development of Brooke Benson. Last year, she started all 49 games. She hit 341. Um, she was a catalyst in the box and in the infield. And she's going to be somebody that Indiana is going to need. Bassett's probably not going to see a whole lot of playing time at second base with the addition of Taryn Kern, which means that Brooke Benson is the senior veteran in the infield for them at shortstop. And her talent and her experience is going to be really helpful to do what Sam suggested is that defense has got to be better. Well, it starts with Brooke Benson. Um, and I think that her game from her freshman year when we saw her in 2020 uh, going into 2021, 2022 and now in 2023 she's great she's performed so I feel like Brooke Benson is, is going to be the most valuable player for this team she might not get all the accolades but I think that her value to the team is, is irreplaceable and they'll need that because you know you still have your tough stretch of um, tournaments that they're going through right now in about a month, Big Ten play starts. Sam, I'll start with you on this one. How do you think they're going to fare in Big Ten play this season? Yeah, I think they're going to finish about like they did last season, kind of in the middle of the pack. I, I think that the Big Ten has different teams that are kind of stronger. Northwestern is still strong, but Maryland is really strong this year, too, on top of that. And Michigan is kind of down after Carol Hutchins retired. Um, but I, I think that they'll probably finish around – eighth and seventh they'll I think they'll make the Big Ten tournament um, and I think they might even make a good run in the Big Ten tournament but I think that like we mentioned they've really struggled hitting this past weekend and if they continue to have those struggles I don't know if I would put them top four in the Big Ten. Emma? I thought about this question a lot because you know on one hand there was a lot of hype coming in for Team 50 in the season of you know really really good offense they were hitting well in their practices they hit well during fall ball um, but I'm gonna put them at a good six seed probably for the Big Ten tournament I think they're middle of the pack still um, but I think that you know the first two weeks of a softball season does not tell you the full story I mean we saw Texas last year they went over five in the Clearwater Invitational. They ended up making Women's College World Series final. Um, everybody wrote them off. They went unranked, and you know they almost got to lift the hardware. The first two weeks of a softball season is so you get all of the kinks out, like we were talking about. Um, but like the next couple of weeks are going to be really important for them. If they can get the wins that they need and they get the confidence going in, this could be a steamroller team in the Big Ten. They just got to. They just got to finish. They just got to get all of the things in the right place. And that's hard to do in softball because it's such a situational game. Um, but I think that they can finish middle of the pack. And like Sam, I think they can make a run in the Big Ten tournament. But it starts with making sure that you're on top of your game 
and finishing what you need to do. Um, and, and I feel like Team 50 is capable of that. Right, anything to add? I'm going to stick with the same thing <laughs> that they said. They kind of covered it all. All right, that makes it easy enough. Before we go to break, we'll talk postseason College World Series, Women's College World Series. you got to make that tournament. Is that this season in reach, yes or no, Ryan? Um, I would say no, but maybe in Big Ten play, if we can see some of those consistencies and finishing games, then maybe they can hit, it, hit make it there. But I'm going to say Big Ten tournament for sure. Emma? Kind of like with Ryan, I think they can make it to the Big Ten tournament. I think now, um, now Sean's ten tenure it should be an expectation for them to make it to the Big Ten tournament. But it's that final hump of making it to the NCAA tournament. I think that individually, if you line all the players up and you look at their talents, I think they're capable of it. I think they can compete with the teams from the Sun Belt and the SoCon and all of these other at-large bid teams. And we saw some teams last year, like OSU and Nebraska, that made it to the NCAA tournament that Indiana took games from. Um, and they played really, really well against. So I think that they can do it. It's just they have to get over these blocks um, and I don't think that it's this season yet, but I think that they're preparing themselves for hopefully a big jump in the next couple of years. Yeah, I, I would have to agree. I'm also teetering more towards no. That, Like Emma said, this team has so much potential to make it, and they're so athletic and have so much talent on the team. But getting all of the pieces to work at the same time seems to be an issue for the team, and I don't know if they can get it fixed quick enough to be able to make that step or build the resume to make the NCAA tournament. And I do think that they'll make a run in the Big Ten tournament. I'm not sure if it'll be enough to send them to the postseason play, but like like everyone else said, I'm, I'm teetering more towards no, um, and maybe in the next few seasons they'll make it there. Well, Sam, Emma, Ryan, don't go anywhere, because coming up after the break, I'll be sitting down with Indiana Softball's head coach, Shauna Stan. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We teased earlier that it's going to be a special show, and wow, was I right. Shauna Stan, head coach of Indiana Softball, is here. Shauna, thank you so much for coming in. Evan, this is great. You guys do a phenomenal job here at IUS TV. What an awesome experience, right? Media yeah, school is pretty legit. It's, it's super legit, and we, and we love covering you guys as well. So let's get right into it. I want to start with a personal question. When did you first fall in love with softball? Oh, gosh. I was eight <laughs> years old. I played for Dairy Queen. That was the team, our team name because that's who we were sponsored by. And I learned pretty quickly when we won, we got free ice cream. So winning is important, right? Um, but I can, you know, I never in a million years imagined eight years old in my little powder blue Dairy Queen outfit <laughs> that one day I'd be the head coach at Indiana. I've coached in the pro league. Um, but just what a tremendous opportunity uh, what sport has done for me. Is there any, like, flavor that you like? Did you guys have, like, flavors on the back of your jerseys? We did not. I'm pretty <sighs> simple. I'm more of, like, a plain vanilla. Peanut butter. Okay. Love, love chocolate okay. peanut butter. But right. anyway, you know, you were at Marshall for 18 years and, yes. and came here a couple of years ago. What was that experience like going from Marshall to Indiana and, and why Indiana? Yeah. Well, don't forget my very first year was IUPUI. Mm. So I've come full circle. Yes. And, you know, thinking of um, not imagining that I'd be back here in the state of Indiana, how awesome. But, um, you know, when I had the opportunity when Indiana called, uh, you know, of course, it, it was a situation that you had to check it out, right? You're in the Big Ten, a reputable university in terms of academics. And then the brand. And then when I got here and saw the facilities at Andy Moore Field, um, I really felt aligned with the values. Um, you know, that Fred Glass of 24 Sports won team. Uh, Scott Dolson now has elevated things too with the Women's Excellence Initiative. Um, so just the, the values aligned. And I really believe it's a sleeping giant, uh, the softball program. We have a rich history and we're going to get it back to that. And we can't wait for you guys to get it back to that. So speaking of that, one of the things to get there is recruiting talent. What do you look yes. for in players, you know, young girls that want to play softball? What are the qualities you yeah. look for for them well, to come to Indiana? First, we're looking for athletes. And we saw that with COVID. You didn't know who would be available. And so you got to be able to have somebody, if they're playing short, can you throw them out in left field? So we're looking for athleticism. Uh, five tools in the sport. And so they need one tool that's elite and then a couple other tools that can supplement that elite skill. And then from there, it's a mindset, right? You want winners. Uh, winners win. Uh, you want competitors. 
competitors. Uh, you want people that are great teammates, uh, and they gotta love to play, right? And they gotta be super grateful. Um, you know, if if their habit is gratefulness and appreciation, then love is gonna be their reflex. They're gonna love to play. They're gonna love the process, and good things are gonna happen. And speaking of, you know, people you bring in, Team 50. It's the 50th year yeah. this year. What excites you the most about this team? Gosh, we'll never have Team 50 again, right? <laughs> Just like you never had Team 49. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, I tell you what excites me is, one, their athleticism. Uh, two, the youthfulness and who's going to emerge. We've got like three or four starters that are penned in maybe for 60 games. From there, it's going to be going from strength to strength, rotating a lot of different people. There's competition within the team. Uh, and so just kind of unwrapping every single day and what's going to happen, who's going to emerge. I thought when we looked at this past weekend, Taryn Kern was a huge bright spot, a freshman. Uh, you know, to come out and perform on that stage was pretty exciting. Opening weekend, I thought Sarah Stone and Brooke Benson stepped up and did a really nice job. Uh, so every weekend, I think it can be somebody different, and it's going to be fun when we put it all together. And let's talk about this weekend. It was a tough weekend. One run yeah. in the last three games, four runs in the last five games. Right. What do you think the team can learn from a stretch like that? Sure. Well, we knew it's an ESPN invite only. Um, and so we knew it, it was going to be stacked, right? Uh, and we knew very well we could go out, and you could go 0-5 on the weekend, but we knew we could not trade that experience. To be able to play four out of the five top-ranked teams, you know, one day we, we faced uh, uh, two teams that were ranked in the top five, um, and so we knew we were going to be challenged. That's only going to make you better. And we had some really good micro moments. And so for us, it's can you take those micro moments and now stack them together? The way we built the schedule was the opening two weekends, we were going to be challenged early and often. And then this next month, uh, it was built uh, for us to go ahead and take care of the process and, you know, get after it, build some confidence, and get some wins in the column. So was, I'm pretty yeah. excited about it. Was there one micro moment that you just t mentioned that really stood out? Like, what to you, you know, is that micro moment from last weekend? Well, I mean, I think you take the situation, we had micro moments because we were stretched and uh, every, every gem is polished with friction and we had a ton of friction. And so seeing our athletes, how did we respond? What did we learn? You know, look at somebody like uh, Sophie, a freshman who uh, got to be able to uh, face some of the best hitters in the country right off the bat. Uh, you can't trade that experience, right? Uh, you see Cora Bassett being a game leader and when we're struggling, come up and uh, drop a bomb. Um, and so can you stay the course and not play the scoreboard? And I think we saw that. I saw somebody like Cassie Kettleman. You know, we're down 10 nothing, and she's laying out for a ball in left field and taking a chance. Uh, and those are the things that we want. But I, can, I mean, I can give you a million examples. <laughs> you know, I know we're short on time. But though I have a long list. Even though the result wasn't there, I've got a long list of good, and my staff has been compiling all the micro moments for us to show them the highlights. What you would think in the box score, there weren't any. Mm -hmm. um, there were tons of hi uh, highlights for us within our program to celebrate. And we, we got a lot of time. We got as much time as we really want. <laughs> great, great. Uh, but moving forward, let's talk about Big Ten play. How do you see the competition in the Big Ten playing out this year? Well, the Big Ten, last year, seven teams we got in, and I think it's going to be every bit as strong. When you look at a team like Maryland, uh, who's come on strong in the preseason, they just got ranked in the top 25, there's going to be no easy weekend. And we've seen that in every sport. I mean, look at women's basketball and what they're doing and how they're dominating. They're making it look easy, uh, but it's not that easy, right? Uh, they are just, you know, been absolutely phenomenal to watch. Look what our men's basketball program is doing, right? And you can go on and on about every team here at Indiana, right? Um, Big Ten is a legit conference, and that's what made this job so attractive, right? Um, so I think it's going to be wide open. Um, I think what we're going to see is every team, which every team really secures a pitching staff, uh, is going to be the team that's most successful. And we saw that down in Clearwater. I mean, there were games, uh, top 10 teams playing a 10-9 ball game. Uh, the idea of a 2-1, 2-0 ball game uh, may be a thing of the past. I think with the bat technology and the film that we now have available, uh, I think those things, it's going to be really an offensive game. So I think you have to have a staff, uh, and you got to be able to produce runs. That's great. All right, let's talk. We talked Big Ten. Let's look big picture. College World Series, women's softball. What do you think that picture is going to be? Do you have any, like, two teams that you think are going to be there at the end? Well, it's too early to tell, <laughs> but I, I will tell you, uh, you know, obviously Oklahoma, you know, they're like a pro team. Uh, they really have separated themselves uh, with the athletes that they have. But UCLA just finally moved in, uh, kind of knocked them off, and one of the polls they are now ranked number one. Uh, what a welcome addition that will be to the Big Ten, uh, adding UCLA. Uh, they're a premier uh, national contender, and for them to be pre er, ranked right now early on, uh, they'll be there. Uh, but then you look from there, there's tons of teams that can make the run. You look at what Northwestern did from the Big Ten. Um, and so, I, you know, it doesn't matter the conference. There's always uh, an underdog that sneaks in, too. Uh, we've got a great format. Uh, the, it's one of the most exciting games out there, the Women's College World Series. Uh, what, what they've done, uh, you know, with the camera crews and just the action. Uh, and then when you see them dropping bombs, you see them taking the next 60 feet, uh, you see people throwing 70 miles an hour. Uh, these are some phenomenal athletes that play this game, and it's a super fun, fast environment.
I couldn't agree more. One question to close it out. What would be one word to describe your IU career so far? Exhilarating. Um, you know, I think for me as a coach, I really love what I do. Uh, and every day I wake up, I am proud to represent Indiana University. Uh, and we want our athletes every day when they wake up to just be proud to rep the, rep the script. And so, um, you know, I, I'm not going to give you just one word. I, it's exhilarating. <laughs> you can give me as many but, words you know, as you I tell want. You, I, I, I like grateful. one word. Yes, I, I'm just grateful. I'm honored. I'm humbled um, to be a part of this university at this time, you know, under the president that we currently have, under the athletic administration that we currently are under. Uh, it is a phenomenal time. And now's the time. And I really look for us within the softball program to elevate our game and I think we're gonna be on the rise I've asked that question to a lot of people I know Emma's asked that question to a lot of people I don't think I've gotten that good of an answer so coach <laughs> thank you so much for taking time coming up after the break our panel is back and we're making quick fire predictions don't go anywhere we'll see you in a minute Welcome back. Still on the panel, Ryan Costello, Emma Watson, and Samantha Condra. Time for quick fire predictions, my favorite thing. In one to two sentences, we'll make our predictions. Emma, I'll start with you. Big Ten Player of the Year. Who I, is it and why? I can't do this in two sentences. Yeah, you can. <laughs> I can try. Then what's the point of quick fire if you're just going to oh take 30 seconds? Anyway, my time is <laughs> ticking down. Uh, I'm going to go with Nebraska as Maya Felder. Um, Nebraska was kind of a dark horse in the Big Ten tournament last year. They made a remarkable one, one run, oh my gosh, to win that <laughs> automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. While they didn't do as well as they hoped, um, Felder was a huge piece in their success. Um, she made the All Big Ten tournament team last year. And even though they haven't started in the way that they wanted to, Nebraska is still there. They're still up there at the top of the Big Ten, and it's largely due to Felder. So I think that um, Felder is going to help Nebraska probably to another Big Ten tournament run. Um, so she's... Which is really great. That was more than two sentences. That was a lot more than I'm two sorry. sentences. Ryan, can you do it in two <laughs> sentences? Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Bailey Parshall from Penn State. She led the um, league in um, oh e ERA, and I know she's gonna do it again because she's already started off with a hot start. Penn State's five and zero, and I can see her bringing them to bright places. Awesome, Sam. I'm going at Northwestern's Jordan Rudd. She was is the only catcher in conference history to be in the first team All Big Ten through all three seasons that she's been. Uh, in the Big Ten, and so I'm going to go with her. I think that Northwestern team is really good. I feel like they also kind of didn't get off to as good of a start as they wanted to, considering they just came off of a really big run in the College World Series, but I, I regardless say I, I'm going to go with the Northwestern player. I feel like I got to. Someone yeah, has to yeah. on the panel. Somebody has to. <laughs> so sticking on that, the next question is, team of the, who wins the Big Ten? I'm assuming Northwestern? No. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna throw a curveball here. All right. Okay. Ooh. No pun intended. You're already over your two your two sentences. Okay. <laughs> so sorry. I, what, is, what is quick fire? If we say okay. <laughs> I'm going Maryland quick fire because they're off to a really hot start start, and I think that they have a lot of just spirit behind their team, and they seem like they're having a really good time out there, and they look really good on the stat sheets too. Who doesn't like having a good time playing ball, Emma? Fine, Northwestern. I'm going <laughs> to pick Northwestern. It was a shame that they didn't win the Big Ten tournament last year, um, but I think that this team, they return almost everybody from their Women's College World Series run team. They got Jordan Rudd. Um, they've got a lot of superstars, really good freshmen coming in. I think they'll easily take the Big Ten tournament. Right. I agree, and it's because of Danielle Williams that Northwestern will be able to get that title in revenge last year. Ryan's, Ryan's got the quick fire He's got quick fire done. Hey. <laughs> I'm not, like, staring at anybody, but I'm like staring at hey. I appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, have what's the best conference? <laughs> I, I have seen your Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, moving on, best conference in college softball, Emma. Oh, it's a toss-up. Because it's... Oh. it's Shut up. See what you did. <laughs> that was nice. It's between the ACC and the Sun Belt for me, honestly. And, you know, people wouldn't really think about the Sun Belt, that they have a lot of really good softball teams down there in Coastal Carolina and Troy. Um, and then, of course, you know, Raging Cajuns. So, um, but I'm going to go with the ACC. I think that the money put in between Duke and Clemson in the past three years, you're seeing it. Um, they have a lot of talent, a lot of explosive players. And I think that they can make a run in the postseason. They didn't last year. Um, which was a shame. Everybody kind of fell off, especially FSU. But you got FSU, you got Duke, you got Virginia Tech, you got Clemson, and maybe even Georgia Tech. I feel like the ACC is now overtaken. Maybe the Pac-12 and the SEC is the best conference in college softball. 
I don't. I, I think there's not a lot of schools in that ACC that I think you didn't mention, which is kind of crazy because I can't remember the ones you didn't mention. Anyway, mm -hmm. Ryan, what about you? I'm gonna go with the SEC because there is nine ranked teams from the SEC, and IU saw how good they can be this past weekend in Clearwater. Great quick fire. <laughs> I'm so. also going to go SEC like Ryan. We saw firsthand how good that they are. And I think even farther down in the top 25, teams like Kentucky will do really well in the College World Series and the NCAA tournament. And speaking of the Women's College World Series, there's eight teams. Who do you have as your locks? It could be one. It could be eight. It could be as many. I know Emma has eight prepared. So we're going we're gonna to save your answers. <laughs> Aww, Ryan, I'll start with you. <laughs> um, my top four would be Oklahoma, UCLA, um, Florida, and then I'm going to throw in a curveball and do Mississippi State because they just completely dominated IU in the game. So, yeah. All right, Sam. Okay, my locks, I'm also going to go with three. I'm going to pick Oklahoma. I feel like it's kind of inevitable that they'll make it back. Um, I'm also going to go UCLA, who looked really good on opening weekend. And I know we mentioned that opening weekend isn't that important, but I, I think it's a little bit important in terms of just kind of starting off hot and just keeping that momentum going. And then kind of farther down, I'm going to go LSU. They're still undefeated. And I mentioned the SEC. I really like the SEC and how they, they look. So those are going to be my three locks. Give us your eight. <laughs> you want eight? Oh, you want 16. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, uh, Oklahoma, obviously, I mean, they're an elite team. They're kind of leagues above everybody else. They're kind of like South Carolina in a way with women's basketball where it's them and then it's the rest of the playing field. So Oklahoma. I'm also going to say Oklahoma State. Uh, Oklahoma State, UCLA, Clemson as well. I don't have LSU, but I do have the other Tigers team. Again, for the, the things I say, Kegel right now, she's – developed really really well they look really good in the first couple of weekends i'm also going to say alabama i think alabama makes a run fsu comes back i'm also going to say georgia because i'm a little <laughs> biased <laughs> um but i think that georgia has been unlucky with the past couple of weekends but as soon as they get that pitching staff once the pitching is taking control and they get those bats flying georgia can compete for the sec and maybe be up there with arkansas and alabama and then I'll say Washington as well and Arizona. There we go. Yes. Either I counted nine or I just can't do math. No. I, really sure, I also can't do math. Oh, well, that's why <laughs> None I'm of us can do math. That's why, yeah. um. Anyway, last question, <laughs> last question before we wrap up. Your college World Series of softball champion. Sam, we'll start with you. I'm going repeat champion. Oklahoma. I Ooh. think the Sooners are going to take it home again. As much as I'm not really a fan of a back-to-back -back champ, but, you know, I think they're going to do it. They're so dominant. They're going to try to continue that dynasty. Emma. You see, I think that the Women's College World Series title is going to stay in Oklahoma, but it's not going to be in Norman. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be with Oklahoma State. Right now with Kaylee Maxwell and now the transfer Lexi Kilfoyle, they got the pitching staff down. And Oklahoma has a gap a big Jocelyn aloe shaped gap right now and if you don't have that run support you put more pressure on these new pitchers and transfer pitcher Alex Straco. I think Oklahoma State takes this one. Ryan bring us home. I think it's gonna be Oklahoma like she said Alex Straco from Michigan she will be there and then there's still two other good pitchers that were there last year that have experience so Nicole May and Jordy Ball so I think they're gonna be able to get the title once again. Well, Samantha, Ryan, Emma, thank you so much for joining me today. That's going to do it for the show this week. Be sure to continue the discussion and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at IUSTV Sports. With that, there is one thing left to do, so toss it up, and I'll toss my fake softball up. Find out if we'll catch it, and we'll see you next week.